It was just five years ago that many of the smartest people here in the Silicon Valley were saying, pronouncing the end of the physical store. You recall the quotes, software is gonna eat the world. Software is gonna eat the store. So software is eating the world and therefore will leave what kind of world behind? Well, those sound bites sounded good as sound bites often do, but the problem is they weren't true. What we've learned over the past five years is software is the foundation of the world, but the same software that enabled the digital commerce revolution has enabled the physical stores to fight back. And it took a couple of decades, but the physical stores have found their way back. There's no doubt about it. And I like to think we've entered a new era, which I call the post-digital era of commerce, where digital retailers are actually racing to physical faster than physical re retailers are racing to digital. And it's pretty mind-bending to contemplate that because we've all been talking about stores are done. But the reality, the stores have found their place. Let me share a few examples. You know, Amazon's been the most amazing company of the last two decades. We're all admirers. Their stock price continues to go up. But what have they done in the last 18 months? 18 months ago, they acquired Whole Foods, a large grocery chain. Just last August, they announced Amazon Go, a convenience store without checkout. It's an incredible innovation. And they've opened up 10 or 12 of these. They're right here in San Francisco. And just last month, they announced that they're gonna build out a chain of grocery stores across the country. This is Amazon, the king, the creator of online commerce, moving rapidly into physical. You know, I think there's a good chance that the king of online retail, Amazon, will actually add more square footage to the United States than any other retail strategy over the next decade. That's profound. But look at all these digital first brands. Warby Parker, you know, kind of invented a new way to buy glasses. They now have over a hundred retail stores in the US, and I believe the stores generate over half their revenue. Allbird started four or five years ago, has two styles of shoes. Well, I was just in London last week and walked by an Allbirds store that was about the size of our second generation Apple stores. And they've got stores now in eight of the big cities around the world. Away, this amazing company that's kind of reinvented luggage as we know it, raised $50 million last year to grow. And a big part of the strategy is to open physical stores. And their physical stores are doing $4,000 a square foot. You know, think of Peloton. You know, this great inventor of how we work out in our homes. Well, they just decided for fun to open a store at Short Hills a few years ago, and it's become their primary way they acquire customers. The stores are fantastic. They now have stores in 23 of the states, nearly half the states in the country have a Peloton store. Now, there are some digitally native brands that are thriving, but they have unique business models. It's like what Katrina and team have created at Stitch Fix, that they figure out a whole new way to use AI to create unmatched personalization. Well, you don't need stores for that because they've got to centralize their inventory to ship personal boxes to people. Or you think of what Jen's done in New York and the team with Rent the Runway, that's a whole new model for how you manage your wardrobe. You don't own your clothes, you rent them. Well, you wouldn't use a store for that. But if you're a digital first brand, you are gonna have a physical presence. That's just interesting. You can't survive as a digital retailer alone. But at the same time, what we've seen is the physical brands have gone digital and they're being incredible, incredibly successful. Nowhere is it more true or more obvious than with the two big mass merchants, Target and Walmart. And I've talked about this before, but it's the equivalent of a retail prize fight. It's like a title fight. There's no doubt that the first rounds went to Amazon. For the last three or four quarters, I think most people would say that Target and Walmart have now outperformed. Why has this happened? Well, let's look at Target first. Target made a big bet three years ago. The CEO, Brian Cardell, came in and said, we're gonna invest $7 billion redoing our stores. But they not only made the store better, 
they made the store the engine of their digital commerce strategy. And today their online sales are growing nearly 40% a year, but 70% of the time that online inventory comes from your local Target store. 40% of the time people actually drive and pick up at the store. Well, that's a lot more efficient model because now there's a lot of ways to do my Target run. I can run to the store or the store can run to me. Or I can just drive to the store and pick it up. It's a profound change and customers are responding. Traffic to the stores is up 5% year over year, the best in a decade, while their online stores are flourishing. They fought back. Walmart just three years ago made a big bet by acquiring Jet because they thought it would jumpstart its digital business with a lot of new thinking. And it has. The team in Hoboken, I visited them a few times, is an amazing digital team that's driving the entire online operation to innovate. They're now growing their digital stores 40% a quarter, nearly four times Amazon. Now it's off a smaller base than Amazon, but it's faster growth. So Target and uh, Walmart will double their digital sales every 18 months when it's gonna now take Amazon doubling every seven years in the US. So they fought back, right? Now, it's not just though what the retailers do on their own, it's other things that are having an impact. So let's look at like the shopping centers. When the fear came that stores wouldn't survive, the shopping center's entire business model was threatened, so they had to innovate, and they've done that. It's amazing what Simon Malls and Taubman and Macerich have done to create an invitation to digital-only brands. They've changed their lease terms to make them shorter. They've created pop-up spaces that in effect create a testing ground, a playground for these digital first brands to learn about retail. They've done it and they're adding a lot of stores. You know, uh, I'm in New York this week. Just last month, Hudson Yards opened. It's the biggest retail mall investment in decades in the US. And of the five shopping floors, the entire second floor is devoted to digital first brands. So digital first is not only a strategy, there's ample real estate for them to take advantage of. You know, I, I live here right near Stanford and I frequent Stanford Shopping Center. It's one of the hardest places to find a parking place. But why is it? Because the mall has so many great new healthy food choices. It has places to work out like SoulCycle. It's got your Peloton store. And every uh, you know physical brand has put in the best version of themselves. And now everyone's going to Stanford Shopping Center. They're spending more time there. So the malls have helped people fight back. But a second thing that's happened that's really helped the stores is we had this new industry emerge like overnight, which is this fast delivery. And some of the highest value tech companies of late have been people like DoorDash and Postmates and uh, Delivery in the UK and Instacart. And what these people do is they enable you to order online or directly from them and bring it to you, literally within 30 minutes. Well, what does that do? That enables the physical store without any change to their business model to be faster than buying online. All of this helps the physical store compete. So we've clearly entered a new phase of commerce where the physical stores in many ways have the upper hand because they've got inventory that can be bought by customers or it can be used to serve as the engine of e-commerce. So people ask me all the time, well, Ron, why didn't anyone see this coming? Well, I think there's two main reasons. The first is kind of the myth of the invincibility of Amazon. You know, Amazon's still performing great. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I saw this move before. You know, I've been in retail for nearly four decades. And in the 80s, Walmart had a big breakout. And everyone said, no one will ever compete with Walmart. Well, they had a huge impact. There used to be 10 regional discount stores. Now there's really two. But Target figured out how to fight back and Walmart eventually became part of the landscape, but it wasn't the only part of the landscape. You know, Amazon in many ways over the last decade has been like Walmart was in the 80s. But what happened back then is everyone fought back together. Manufacturers didn't want to become too dependent on Walmart, so they changed their distribution strategy. Physical retailers like Target learned how to price more competitively. They learned how to use systems more competitively. They learned how to differentiate their merchandise when Target did their design. 
All of that allowed them to fight back. So rarely in business does any company own more than a decade or two before people learn to compete. The second thing is there's been this idea that the mall is dead. Well, the reality is crappy malls and bad stores can't compete anymore. There's too many great choices. And in the U.S., we're way overstored in terms of square footage. They have seen estimates that the U.S. has 10 times the square footage of retail than places like the U.K., and there are a lot of stores in the U.K. Well, we've got to winnow down real estate. And what's happened is the second tier malls and less vibrant economies are closing. The longstanding second tier retailers that don't have great products, great service, can't afford to invest in their stores and their digital strategies are just not able to compete anymore. And so we've got a lot of positioning on, but don't be confused that just because we're closing stores that the well-positioned stores aren't surviving. Actually, they're thriving. The best malls in the country have never done better. Target and Walmart have never done better. And so don't confuse an overstored U.S. with a lot of tired stores with a fundamental change and people are going digital. Because I really believe we're in a point where the physical store in many ways has the upper hand. So what's going to happen? What's next? Well, I think three or four things. One, we're going to continue to see a significant number of store closures. We're after a record year in store closures. But don't think that means the store is dead. That just means we have too many bad malls. We're going to continue to see the evolution of high quality brands. They're going to invest more and more in making experiences in their stores. You know, we did that early on at Apple. We invented the idea of an experience through Genius Bars and programs. And Apple continues to innovate on that with their Today program. Other people have uh, caught the wave. And so all retail stores to compete have to do something you can't get online. You'll see a lot of investment in experiences and then creating this seamless physical digital experience. We're going to continue to see an amazing battle between Amazon, Walmart, and Target. And I think there's going to be quarters where Amazon outperforms. There'll be quarters where Target does. But each of them have in common a very large customer base with easy access. And so there's going to be a really interesting battle to watch there. And finally, new strategies will emerge that have never been on our radar yet. Retail is always about innovation. The question is, what's next? Well, I'm here with my team at Enjoy trying to create the next forefront of commerce. And it's really exciting. And what we've discovered is since customers obviously love the convenience of online, yet still value the confidence and the experience they get in the store, what if you do both? What if you can invent an on-demand mobile store? What if the store could come to you and go through the door faster than you could get to a store? That would be revolutionary. Well, the next time, you know, I share with you, I'm going to tell you about Enjoy because I think it's really, really exciting.